During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about fertility in your lawn, garden, and shelter belt. All right, I'll be honest right up front here. You know what, if you have good fertility for growing a corn crop, you've got good fertility for growing a lot of different things. And so some of the things that we're gonna talk about here for your lawn, your garden, or your shelter belt would be the same as what we would say out in crop fields. So the first thing I would advise, no matter where you're at, if you wanna do something to the soil in terms of fertility, you've gotta take a good soil sample and run a complete analysis with micronutrients and everything so you can see what you're starting with so you know what to do. Okay, so in terms of taking that sample, how we want you to do it is use a soil probe, go down, I'd say probably six inches deep, but you could certainly go 12 inches deep, but just be consistent with your depth. We usually put a mark right on our probe at six inches, so then every time we go right to that same mark and we're in good shape. Keep your probe straight up and down, not at an angle. And then the other thing is you wanna take several different cores. We'll usually say eight to 12 cores. Now they don't need to be over extensive acres or anything like that, but at least pull a few soil cores, throw them all together in the sample bag. The soil test lab will mix that sample for you and then they'll give you that result. So once you know what you have for nutrients, then you can start to feed that soil that's ultimately gonna feed your crop. So when we're looking at the soil, we're certainly looking at nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Those are big ones and also sulfur. That's one that sometimes I think should be put into the primary nutrient list. But if you've got those big four in in sufficient quantities to raise the crop that you want to raise, that's one of the things that you should be targeting. You can download the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app. You can type in whatever crop. Let's just say you're raising tomatoes or you're raising cucumbers. You can see exactly what you're going to need for your yield goal. All right, let me give you a couple of specific things here. Usually for most crops, lawn, shelter belt, we're talking that soil pH. That's the first thing you should look at. We want that in the sixes. Okay, so you might need to lime if it's too low, you might need some elemental sulfur or drainage improvement if it's too high, but just look at the soil test in general. pH, preferably in the sixes. Next thing, base saturation that you can look at. The first thing and most important thing is probably calcium. We'd like to see that calcium in the 65 to 75% range. If it's too low, you need to get some more calcium out there, whether that's lime or gypsum. And then the other big thing I'd mention is potassium, especially with trees. Usually for crops, we talk about we want the potassium level to be in the 4% to 8% range, but with trees, we're talking 7% to even 8%. So with trees, potassium is super important. So if you're too low on that base saturation test, just put more potassium on. All right, and I'll give you my secret ingredient for lawns and for gardens. I really like sulfur. When I get enough sulfur out there for my lawn, I generally have better nitrogen uptake. I have better health in my lawn. I really like that, and I also like it in the garden. Not only does it enhance flavor in a lot of the vegetables that you're growing, but it's an essential nutrient that you need in pretty large quantities. I find many fertilizer blends don't have enough sulfur. You can certainly overdo it too, but make sure you got a sufficient amount of sulfur out there. Yeah, it'd be rare if you you overdo it. Ammonium sulfate and gypsum are two good sources of sulfur depending on if you need nitrogen with the ammonium sulfate or calcium with the gypsum. Well, fertilizing your lawn and your garden and your tree belt is really important and one of the things that it does is it helps whatever you're growing fight off competition from weeds like our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 